Hey everybody, Todd Vandermeide back for another edition of Freedom Steel, former NRA contract lobbyist, Illinois gun law guru. Yes, I know it's been a while. Um, I got sick and was trying to power through that. In between that, uh, some stuff out at the club and just life. Um, and the other thing is, you know, I'm going to bet a bunch of you guys subscribe to a bunch of the same channels I do. And it's always that there are, you know, the issue of the day, the governor of New Mexico, the Fifth Circuit, um, Biden's rules, whatever, you know, and everybody's the same topic over and over. And unless I've got a really different spin or I've got something that is uh, far more poignant or something I think they missed, uh, I, I just don't want to regurgitate the same thing and just you get the same thing with just a different face talking about it. So, uh, but what we have for you today is Tuesday. Um, yesterday, on my way home from Niagara Falls, the state police filed and released their emergency rules, which could turn into the permanent rules for the registration component of the Illinois gun ban. So, what I want to do with you here today is take a quick walk through the rules and uh, let's see what we can find. I had a chance to go through them last night. I did an interview with Greg Bishop this morning about them. So I took a cursory look through them. We're now going through them again and we'll talk about this whole process and everything at the end depending on how long this video goes. 31 pages of rules. Good news is most of it's a list that... Uh, uh, it just takes up a bunch of space. So here we have the press release, the front end of the rule. Skip past that. So in this, the red lines are new stuff. You will see some blue stuff in here, and that is changes. Because they went back and forth with the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules staff, JCAR, and uh, they were told you need to change something. So here... Uh, we're going to start off like most statutes or anything with definitions. This is an emergency rule, and they are granted emergency rulemaking authority pursuant to the statute. Now here, I want to notice that uh, they talk about section 1.9 and 1.10. 1.9, the gun ban. 1.10, the magazine ban. So uh, that's going to, let's see how far they go with that going down the field here so assault weapon means a firearm that meets definition as assault weapon set for 24 1.9 yay uh, ATF means you know they're adding definitions so endorsement affidavit means an affidavit electronically executed through the online FOD system that registers an assault weapon assault weapon attachment 50 caliber rifle or 50 excuse me, 50 caliber cartridge. So there are four things here. Assault weapons, assault weapon attachments, 50 caliber rifle, or 50 caliber cartridge. All right, so let's make a note of that and look at that later on out. FFL means FFL. So here you see this blue and red mix. This is where they had, the red was the original proposed changes and the black is the current existing regulation that state police has on file. They are amending their existing rules for FOIDs to deal with all of this. Um, so they are sticking with the January 10th date. Uh, they got some typos in here and whatever. They're cleaning up the definition of error. Inherits in here. Yep, more definitions. Move to Illinois means to relocate from another state or, or country with intent to make an Illinois primary domicile. Uh, peace officers defined out of state. So if you look, these definitions go in alphabetical order. L, M, and O, P as you go through the alphabet here. So that's so I don't... That helps us find things. Qualified law enforcement officer transfer. Transfer. 
means to permanently relinquishment of ownership of a firearm to other or other item or possession. That's going to be interesting. Uh, make a note of that transfer because that just gave me an idea as I'm sitting here reading that. So I got to make a note or else I'll forget it. Um, Foid card assault weapon electronic affidavit. Here we go. So no person may acquire or possess any firearm. So I'm going to yeah, Foid card. Uh, there are. Uh, there updating some other parts of the FOID card rule it would look to be except it's providing a criminal code beginning here who moves in a state in possession of assault weapon attachment 50 caliber rifle or 50 caliber cartridge or large capacity ammunition may shall apply for a FOID card so wait a minute they are now saying here you have to have a FOID card in order to have a large capacity ammunition feeding device I'm gonna go that's another note I'm gonna to have to go back and look at that in the statute that's interesting see what we learn we'll read this together um, so you have to apply for your FOID card within 60 days I think that's another equal protection claim for Mr. DeVore to uh, look at Electronic affidavit requirement. So, uh, if you want to keep what you have, you have to seek this endorsement, which we kind of know, which is going to lead me to a question are they going to issue new FOID cards across the board? Because remember when we went from expiration dates on FOID cards to no expiration dates, and then they started combining CCLs and FOIDs together and all that kind of stuff? And they started issuing new cards to people without them asking. This is going to be interesting. Uh, requirement. All right. Here's the people that are exempt. Uh, peace officers, qualified officers, and retirees. The retiree stuff always gets me. Uh, federal, state, or, lo or local law enforcement agency. Uh, there we go. It paused. So this goes to part of Mr. DeVore's claim the acquisition position by federal agencies, warden, superintendents, and keepers of correctional institutions. Yeah, that one there is going to be interesting. Exemptions for official duties. Um, are, you know, if you are an armed security personnel and you're on duty, private security members of the Army. How do they ever think they're going to charge members of the armed forces as a state? I don't get that. Um, however, these persons must complete electronic endorsement after they have their possession of these items extends beyond the performance of their official duties. So if a cop does not use a department-issued gun, but the cop has his own personal AR, he has to register. All other exemptions, Olympic target shooting competitors and coaches in possession of any firearm sanctioned by the Olympic Committee. Yay. <clears throat> Non-residents transporting assault weapon attachment, 50 caliber rifle or 50 caliber cartridge to any other place where non-residents may lawfully possess uh, the World Shooting Complex. Now here's an interesting. However, these persons must complete an electronic endorsement affidavit if their possession of these items extends beyond the circumstances outlined in subsection B4. A. For example, if a person owns an assault weapon and hunts with it, their possession extends beyond the hunting use. Or if a person owns an assault weapon and takes it to an event at the World Shooting and Recreational Complex at Sparta, their possession extends beyond the possession at the World Shooting and Recreational Complex at Sparta. As a result, the persons in the above examples would be required to complete an electronic endorsement Affidavit, if a person does not own an assault weapon, but rather rents or borrows one from a neighbor for hunting or a teammate for a shooting event and returns it upon the conclusion of the purpose uh, of the purpose, their possession does not extend beyond the permitted circumstances and that person would not be required to complete an electronic endorsement. 
I hope that neighbor thing is an example and not a definition that you can only borrow a gun from a neighbor because that creates a whole new problem. Um, electronic endorsement affidavit contents. The endorsement affidavit shall include, one, the affidavit, affidence, firearm owner's identification card number, an affirmation that the affiant, A, possessed an assault weapon, assault weapon attachment, 50 caliber rifle, or 50 caliber cartridge before January 10th. So they're not dealing with Freedom Week. They're not dealing with TROs. Um, inherited such item from a person with an endorsement under Section 1.9 of the Criminal Code or from a person authorized under 24 1.9 E1 through E5 of the Criminal Code to possess such item or moved into Illinois after January 10th with such item or is filing an endorsement affidavit voluntarily. All right, this, this last one. Is filing an endorsement affidavit voluntarily? Nobody's doing this voluntarily. Everybody is doing this under penalty of perjury or potentially facing a felony on a second go around on a conviction. So no, nobody is doing this voluntarily. That I think they're trying to squeeze something in here to say, well, you waived your Fifth Amendment rights or whatever because you did this voluntarily. What a load of bullshit. Uh, but this moved into the state after January 10th. So there is the equal protection claim for non-residents because they could buy a gun tomorrow, move in that two months from now, and the gun that you or I were not able to legally buy here in Illinois uh, or and register if someone chose to do that, then they get they get privileges and rights that we don't get. Um, let's see three the make, model, and serial number of each assault weapon or fifty caliber rifle. Okay, make, model, serial number, caliber. Get that. Uh, Warning printed in boldface, entering false information on its form as possible as perjury under Section 32-2 of the Criminal Code. Entering false information on its form as violation of firearm owners identification card act. Uh, an affirmation that the endorsement affidavit is signed under oath, swearing, affirming, and certifying that the statements set forth in the endorsement are true and correct, subject to penalties provided by law. You know what I don't see? Goes, Section D goes into deadlines here. You know what I don't see here? Is how they're going to deal with parts and attachments. There's nothing in here that talks about parts and attachments. They don't have serial numbers on them. So how are you supposed to claim you have pistol grips? You have an extra forehead you have an extra barrel if somebody was so inclined to register these how are you supposed to do that because it doesn't provide any mechanism in these rules it doesn't delineate how to do that it doesn't spell it out it doesn't say what you got to do it doesn't say description it just says the affidavit is only supposed to contain and they're only really dealing with guns Notice that in 1.10, magazines are not required to be registered. So let's go through here. Uh, January 1, if the person resident possessed assault weapon attachment or 50 caliber rifle or 50 caliber cartridge. I mean, they don't even get the 50 caliber cartridge stuff. How are you supposed to go in and say, hey, I got 10,000 rounds of 50 BMG so I can shoot my rifle from now to whenever? Because once you expend this ammunition, you can't bring new ammunition in. Uh, so they're not going to honor Freedom Week. They're not going to honor the TROs. They're setting themselves up for more stuff. Um, Out-of-state stuff. Electronic endorsement affidavit voluntary compliance. Any person in possession of assault weapon, assault weapon attachment, 50 caliber rifle, or 50 caliber cartridge was exempt from the endorsement affidavit requirements section of this criminal may electronically file an endorsement affidavit through the online 
void FCL system voluntarily at any time. So any of the cops or anybody else that are blanket exempt, then nah. Um, penalty, person conv convicted for failure, possession of FOIA card, um, or complete an affidavit is a Class A misdemeanor. First offense, Class 3 or 4 felony, depending on the circumstances for a subsequent offense. Now, this isn't voluntary, guys. It's under penalty of criminal prosecution. Uh, applicant. So, oh, here's where we're going to get some interesting stuff. So, let me scroll up so we get as much of this as possible. A person subject to 9.5 of the Act due to a suspension shall either surrender assault weapons and assault weapons attached with 50 caliber rifles. I'm just going to say stuff. To law enforcement agency for the duration of the suspension or transfer such items to a person authorized to purchase and possess such items consistent with the provisions of section 1.9 and 1.10. All right. Assault B, assault weapons attachments, yada, 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 and, and ammunition feeding devices transferred to another person as a result of a suspension may not be returned upon reinstatement of the FOID card. Section C, they may only be returned by a law enforcement agent to whom such items were surrendered. So if you, your buddy, has an endorsement and you transfer stuff over to him for safekeeping because you don't trust, say, the Cook County Sheriff's Office, then you can't get your stuff back. This now turns into a confiscation order. You lose forever your stuff. And here, they're looking at expanding the surrender items in the FOID card to include parts, magazines, not just guns or ammo. Uh, that's an interesting thing here. Anything, what else is now? Uh, surrender weapons. Yeah, this is a revocation. So, you know, you've got suspensions, you've got revocations depending on a bail. So you get a DUI and condition of bail is no void. And that gets transmitted electronically to the state police where your, your condition of bail is no void. Uh, you have to surrender your guns. If you surrender your guns to anybody but law enforcement, you can't get them back. That, that's a big hiccup. And, uh, you know, we all know that orders of protection and stuff like that are never abused. No. Um, uh, transfer regulated. Um, person was that? Uh, the person fails to comply with any applicable electronic endorsed affidavit fine requirements, the person shall either surrender the possessed item to the law enforcement agency or transfer the possession of the items to a person authorized to purchase and possess such items consistent with the provisions. So you got to give them to a gun dealer so they can move them out of state. Um, if a person's FOIA card is revoked, suspended, or canceled, while in possession of assault weapon, uh, assault weapon attachment, 50 caliber rifle, uh, the person shall either surrender possession of law enforcement agency or transfer possession with the item to a person authorized to purchase. Yeah, again, you're going to lose your stuff. Uh, let's see. If attention is requ required, transfer shall be made to... Yep, here's the people you can an FFL for export to another state, individual residing and maintaining possession in another state, or so even they're not even saying your buddy, they gotta go to an individual in another state and then they can't be transported. Well, that's actually a violation of federal law. You can't transfer guns to somebody in another state without going through an FFL. That's interesting. Uh, this is about retired cops and how they Buy stuff. Subject to endorsement. All right. So here they're just restating. So there was a fight between J. Carr and the 
ISP, they said, we're just going to link it to a website. No, you just, you have to publish it in the rule. You have to publish a document. So all they've done here is they have regurgitated and just copy and pasted the statute. Typical state police, ask them for an answer, they don't answer, the, ask them a question, they don't answer the question. They turn around and they just tell you what the statute says and leave it up to you. So yeah, this is the list of guns that's there. Yep, I'm just scrolling through this because it's the list. You can find that almost anywhere. Uh, let's see, more definitions for hunting. Um, so it basically says if you can shoot wild game with it, it's legal for you to take it out and go do so. Uh, they just regurgitate the wildlife code. And they don't clear anything up. They just regurgitate the wildlife code. Uh, more stuff on hunting. So if you're in possession of an assault weapon while hunting, you must have the required affidavit on your FOIA card. Just one more thing for the game wardens to hassle you over if they choose to do so. And that's the end of the rule. Um, you know what I didn't see in there? <clears throat> I didn't see a definition of readily restored or converted. And remember that language is in the magazine part because readily restored and converted. And there was a little bit of going back and forth about that language in the Fifth Circuit uh, Court of Appeals in the Vanderstock case last week. But um, we'll talk about that in another video. I'm going to try to crank out another vi couple of other videos because I'm going to be doing a bit of uh, moving around. Uh, I, have a, I have a fundraiser fundraiser to go to tonight, and this weekend I will be at the Gun Rights Policy Conference in Phoenix, hosted by the Second Amendment Foundation. I'll be out there um, chatting it up with uh, people from across the country, talking with our attorneys at Michelle and Associates, dealing with a whole host of issues, and I might try to do some short segments from there, but this this thing's got some issues, and uh, we're running up on 25 minutes here, so it's a longer video to get through all this, but um, there are provisions that you're going to forfeit, or they are going to confiscate your firearms. Um, this They want to claim this is all voluntary. It's not. The ISP, once again, has shown their incompetence for their inability to write a rule that answers questions and defines the issues. They didn't touch on readily restored or converted that's in the magazine section of 1.10. Uh, and they definitely opened up more equal protection challenges for Mr. DeVore and company. So next, this is going to go to JCAR. Then we're going to go to the legislators and we're going to have a comment period. And there's probably going to be a request for public hearings on all this. So with all that, we're going to do a whole separate video on what's next with the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules so everybody can get a handle on where this is going to go. We are going to need thousands, tens of thousands of comments coming in from gun owners about how incomplete this rule is with a bunch of questions that we need to force the state police to answer. So... Next one coming up is on JCAR. But guys, this is the emergency rule. I'll put a link down below so you can get to the emergency rule. Read it for yourself. As always, thank you. Like, subscribe, copy and paste this. Share this around your social media. Share it with your friends. Let everybody know what's going on. And as always, frag out.